Hello, this is Mike Lively for Mind When Blowing, and this is our series on HTML5 and CSS3. And today, uh, in this introductory lesson, we want to talk about why HTML5. Now, to understand the why of HTML5, you need to kind of understand where it kind of fits in the scheme of web evolution, uh, where we were, where we are, and where we're going. Uh, the web pretty much started off as a 1D kind of a Unix terminal experience where people were typing in your terminal and you're getting input back. And then we evolved to the 2D browsers where basically we have popular browsers today such as Safari and Firefox and Chrome and IE and Opera. And uh, But basically initially these were just uh, places where businesses put up flyers about themselves and it was informational. But then people figured out how to make money on the web and that evolution was the evolution of e-commerce which went very high and then kind of went flat. But still today we have the evolving e-commerce on the web and where people are figuring out different ways to make money such as banner ads and viral advertising. The next evolution on the web of course were the bloggers. And these were experts that actually had blog engines like WordPress.com and they put up stuff about themselves or their topic and people would follow them, they would follow the experts. But people realized, hey, everyone wanted to get into the act. And the next evolution on the web was social networking. And you have such popular engines such as Facebook and YouTube and Flickr and just a number here listed in the graphics that you've probably used. And uh, education also got in the act with a concept called blended learning where they'd have classrooms and people would meet on social networks and evolve information or projects forward. This is pretty much the basis of the entire open source movement where it's been realized and so powerful open source software actually is moving more rapidly than industry sponsored software. Much of that having to do with that collective development environment. Now here comes the age of what I call the third eye and that's the mobile phone. Now what do I mean by the third eye? Well, the first eye was your TV. You just sat in front of it and watched it. You left it at home when you went to work. The next one was your computer, which was a PC initially, but then it became a mobile laptop, for example, and you carried it to wherever you went. But your third eye is your mobile device. It goes wherever you go. I mean, it's with you all the time. So you might leave your laptop at home. You might leave your laptop in the office, but your mobile phone is always with you. Driving down the highway, at the beach, wherever, your mobile phone is there, and that's the third eye. Now, we used to tell people, hey, look, go global and now we're telling them go mobile. Now if you're a programmer and you're not going mobile, shame on you. Along with the mobile development, you're going to see tons of graphical app builders come up the scene. The technology is extremely complex, cannot really be written all the way by hand now and actually needs a framework for example or an app builder to help you along in the process. Yes, you can spend a ton of time building apps line by line or you can use an app builder to build them more rapidly and while your competitors got one built you'll have 20 built so as long as you understand those and know how to go in behind and code those and recode them as they're needed in the security and you, and you trust your frameworks you're going to see app builders lately and since for example Google App Inventor is a very popular one right now now we're moving in a sense from a 1D, 2D to pretty much a 3D environment. You can see this was on Adobe's agenda. Adobe said look first we're going to do mobile development then we're going to do 3D and of course with Adobe's new Mohill API you're going to see 3D explode on the web. With that explosion you're going to see a new movie experience. As opposed to TV being 2D where you just watch it, you're going to find a new 3D technology come along where people are actually inside the movie. It's a 3D experience for them. Along with that, the, uh, in coexistence is going to come the entire cyborg revolution where your computer is going to have actually mechanical devices attached to it that you're going to reach out and touch and hold and sense with. Now that's being done today, but not so much in the commercial market, and you're going to see that come into fruition. And electrical engineers like myself will get their jobs back because we'll be building and servicing these type of devices. As this moves on, people are going to want to become more immersed into the environment, and they'll be hooking themselves up to devices. And with nanotechnology, you're going to see the next dimensional evolution from a 1D, 2D, 3D to a 4D, where you've got a sensory dimension that people are going to experience who are actually hooking themselves up to chips and other devices who are actually interfacing with their neurons. And so with that said, that's where the technology is headed, and it may sound a little bit sci-fi, but you're going to see this is really pretty much a 20 to 30 year span that all this is going to happen in. And with that, we kind of know where HTML5 is. We're actually in the midst of a new transformation, so let's go on and figure out what HTML5 is and how we can start working with it.